call the meeting to order. Jenkins. Here. Pardon? Here. On. Here. Jenkins. Here. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing that we have on this evening's agenda is the consent agenda. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Call it. Jenkins? Yes. Hahn? Yes. Harden? Yes. McKinley? Yes. Tessori? Yes. Motion carried. There being no unfinished business, we move on to section three new business. We are recommending that item number three be moved up in front. Uh, make a motion to approve resolution uh, ordinance 958-2015-2016 tax levy. I'll second it. Discussion. And, uh, Ruth is here in case we have any questions for her. Just the same as last year. <coughs> it's, um, it's a slight increase, but it's below the truth uh, of taxation. How much is a slight increase? Well, percent wise, uh, we can go up to 105 and it's 104. Okay. Do we have any numbers as far as this will mean, what it will mean to the citizen as far as any additional cost? No, it will be. It's pretty much the same as it does every year. We always do the hundred, right at 104, so we keep it below the treatment side, taxation. So it will be pretty much the same as it's always been. Compared to last year, Mac, dollars <coughs> more generated through this. So you can see it be very minimal to the okay. residents of the community. And that most of that is due to actually the increase in the levy is what they increased from from the property tax there. The, I mean their EAV, not their levy, but their EAV going up, and so then that's where most of it comes from. Because last year the EAV was twenty two two ninety one seven ninety nine, and they're saying next year it will be. No, it'll be a little lower. I'm sorry. I thought it was higher. So it's, it's not gone up to 104%? Yeah, 100, the 104 is correct. Of what we received in last year to what we received in this year. So the EAV won't be quite as high? Is that correct? The EAV last year was 22,291. 799 this year they're saying to uh, estimate they estimate what it'll be and 22 to 3771 okay. so it's very similar <coughs> so total taxes levy with all the different departments are, I think it's 417 851 so that's a slight increase of about 19,000 from last year is what we're saying okay. do we, do we yeah, need, do we need exactly. to increase it or is that just oh. Can't increase it. No, you can't increase it. No. Okay. You, you can go through two truth of taxation, and if it goes above that, then you can come back. But you have to have that hearing, and everything if you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, because our we're maxed out as far as the levy goes to the city, it's twenty five cents per hundred dollar assessed, and we're there, and we've been there for a long time. What fluctuates is your is your taxes, your, your uh, FICA tax, your what else we put on to say? Well, some of it moved around as far as um, I knocked the working cash down some. The working cash is money that we get uh, that set aside. We had to get it for the bond. We have the bond, so the working cash is just to make sure that we have enough money to pay the bond. And that's the only thing we can use that money for. We can borrow it from someplace else, but it has to be paid within a year. So, But I knocked that down because there's enough money in that, so then I put more into um, 
other funds that need it, like more into RMRF and other funds. So I just kind of moved the money around a little bit. And I increased, I did put the uh, uh, ESDA up to the max. It wasn't at the max, and I put it, I put it up to the max because I thought that was a good place for it to go. What is ESDA? Emergency, Emergency Service. Emergency Service. Civil Defense. You're saying, so you're saying the 19,000 is needed to increase? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. The, the unca you have uncapped levies and capped levies. The uncapped levies are uh, Social Security, uh, IMRF. What else is it? Uh, Working cash, uh, I, uh, audit, yeah. liability, which is insurance. And Unemployment insurance. Yeah. Social Security. Cross, that's Social Security. Yeah, that's it. And lease purchase. Yeah. yeah. Those are uncapped levies, so they can flex. <coughs> they can go raise it. The rest of them, they're fixed, and they're fixed at their, they're all capped out. We're, and been that way for a long time. Just the way it's always. Now, if we come back and ask for a tax referendum, raise that twenty-five cents, hundred dollars assessed, we can do that. But this is only carries through to April thirtieth, twenty sixteen. Right. Uh, April third, twenty sixteen. Right. right. Any further questions? Call it. On. Yes. Harden? Yes. McKinley? Yes. Tessori? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Yes, sir. I make a motion to approve resolution 2015-34, uh, resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Farms Group. I'll second it. Discussion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, as you know, we've been dealing with uh, several complaints of the uh, uh, water quality uh, in the Prairie Ridge subdivision. We've been looking for different avenues on how to uh, how to uh, um, negate the, the issues that are out there. And uh, in doing so, we've been uh, doing our own research and we've been working with Farnsworth Group. Um, there's uh, Kevin Hamill from Farnsworth here tonight. Uh, he has a proposal uh, allowing us to extend the water main that's out there. Basically, we're going to be building a loop, um, and that's what uh, that resolution's about. Uh, Kevin's here. If you have any specific questions from him, or if uh, his partner uh, Tim is here with him, Tim is a resident of Farmer City as well. So, is it going to fix it? That the question is, is it going to fix the water problems that we have out there? Well, are you asking me or are you asking Kevin? The gentleman right behind me. Okay. Um, they're going to shoot somebody. I want to. I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, I think by looping that, it will help. Um, I think honestly, there's the the major issue I think out there is the positive aspect of it is is that when that Prairie Ridge subdivision was developed, there was a tinge water main that was extended out there. Uh, I assume, based on what I've seen as far as the preliminary plans that a previous or a different consultant had prepared for that, uh, it would be my understanding that that was upsized to be able to service that as it continued to grow and develop, uh, and there's more homes, more customers out there. Uh, the 10 inch to me is, is probably what's causing the majority of the problems because it's such a large water that it's oversized and really just that first phase or first edition was developed, uh, there's a lot of water standing or stagnating in that in that main. By looping it, it'll help that. I think the other thing that uh, we've talked to Larry and Calvin about is, is that in addition to looping it, you're also going to want to institute a regular flushing program to keep that water fresh. So I think between those two, that should work. Uh, there's some other options that if that doesn't work, we can talk about other other avenues, other options. There's there's plenty of other ideas out there, but I think those are probably the two quickest and easiest and most cost effective. So I think I saw you up there on the highway that one day. Yes sir. Yeah. Um, 
you're going to loop it back up towards the end of town. Is that what you, yeah, you had mentioned back up on, along Route 54 there. Because yeah. I think there's a, from where it splits and the 10, off, 10 inch comes off and goes west to come back down, kind of along the back side, mm -hmm. or the north side of, of Prairie Ridge, there's a 4 inch that continues on along 54 to pick up a few more customers. And then it dead ends also. So what the plan is is to take that along 54 and connect the the southern end of George Rock, extend it under Route 54, and then come back to the uh, northeast and tie in that dead end on the four on 54. So you're saying the 10 inch, it, they put the 10 inch in anticipation of the bigger subdivision. I assume. I, I was not involved with that, and, and that actually wasn't our firm. So is, is a six inch going to be enough to, to make the loop? And when, it, when that subdivision goes north, will that be will that loop the rest of the subdivision in, or are we going to do this again? Well, the uh, the loop, we, the, essentially, the main feeder is going to be that ten coming that's there now, the existing, because more of the water is going to want to go the ten path rather than the, the four inch, and then the six inch to come in the other way. So. It's really just looping <coughs> to that end. Now, as, as it continues to go north, my assumption would be is that they'll come off of that 10 and then extend north off that 10, to where that 10 would still be feeding what's there now and what may develop it in the future to the north. Well, what about looping the future water pipe back into the 6 inch? Is that something that's going to be done or planned for? Into the 6 inch. We, we got, we've, got, we've got the pipes that are going out there now to a dead end. Right. We're going to add more, potentially add more properties with more pipes going out right. to another dead end. Right. Are so we get into the north? Yes. Right. So, I'm, so what I'm asking is, will the loop that you're planning for now take care of the future pipe? Is, see what I'm saying? we got a problem with this section. We don't want to create another problem right. with the other section without a plan. Uh, I, I, I think maybe to answer your question, Scott, additional houses out there means more water usage, means the water's right. going to be flowing more. We're, what we're looking at is to get that water to move right now, and, and Calvin's going to come up with a regular flushing program. He's gone out there. Uh, he's drawn a couple samples, and Calvin's here. He can, he can speak as well. His uh, chlorine residuals have already gone up, so the water quality is already increasing out there. And you see that we're talking about another loop inside of the subdivision as well. But our plan right now is to get, we, we need to get the water moving. Right. And so that's what this allows. But as new houses grow and, and then the water main, you'll have extended loops out there. So you're going to have a puzzle of water mains going out there anyway. So, but that is as the subdivision grows. So I guess this, this water loop can be extended out to the new mains. Oh, absolutely. Okay, that's, that's kind of where I was driving. Sure. Other questions? Call it. Harvey? Yes. McKinley? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Hahn? Yes. Motion. Uh, make motion to approve resolution 2015-35. Resolution establishing the 2016 meeting dates as required by law. I'll second. Discussion? That looks good. Call it. McKinley? Yes. Kessler? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Hahn? Yes. Harden? Yes. Motion carries. This moves us to section four. Other items? The city manager's report. Well, we've got a couple things on here, and we just allowed for the uh, the uh, extension of that loop along Route 54. One of the other things is, is that Kevin's office will be uh, getting a uh, EPA permit, and in the permit, that will also allow the city employees to extend the water main from Honeysuckle over to Bluebell. Um, those are dead ends right now. Um, they're going to put uh, city guys are going there and put T's. So when that uh, subdivision continues to grow to the west, <coughs> then that can be extended onto the west as well. Um, and you see that we've got an estimate there of about $16,000 to do that. When the weather um, kind of settles out and it, it takes uh, 
38, 45 days from the EPA to get permits and all that and get a design. Um, if the weather's good, as early as they can, they'll be out there, the city crews, and they'll be putting that water main in. <clears throat> Uh, you see that the state of Illinois, um, bless the, go the governor, he's released some video te gaming tax money. Uh, Ruth reported that we got $17,935.57. Finally, that was for about uh, five months worth of uh, gaming tax. Um, one of the issues at the uh, subdivision is the uh, um, ticks and everything that are out there in that uh, detention retention basin. Um, the guys did go out there and they uh, jetted out one of the uh, uh, outlet pipes. Um, um, we're going to have Farnsworth Group go out there and get some uh, topographics to find out what's going on out there. Uh, that thing obviously is not draining properly. That's why it's always overgrown with the trees and the weeds and everything, allowing for the uh, uh, mosquitoes and the ticks. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Tomorrow is a uh, luncheon for the city employees at noon. You are all welcome to come up and, uh, and be with the city employees for a Christmas dinner. The IMEA will be hosting electrical operators training down to IMEA headquarters. Uh, that will be next month. Uh, Brandon, John, and Terry Amaker will be attending that. It's a one-day seminar. IMEA has realized that um, municipal power plants that belong to the IMEA are sitting there idle. And so it's not fresh in the guys' minds how to, you know, jumpstart those motors and get them online when they get that big phone call. So they're going to start having training sessions down there in various locations throughout the state. So eventually there may be a training session um, held here where other towns will come here. <clears throat> the pharmacy should be opening um, no later than January 8th. Um, they hope to have a kind of a soft opening and then a ribbon cutting ceremony will follow that. I'll keep you posted so we can get as many of you down there as possible. That seems to be moving well. And then uh, Keith Moran, um, our TIP consultant, we have a group phone call with the uh, city uh, staff concerning uh, different deficiencies, um, whether it was electric, water, streets, or whatever, in the uh, proposed TIP. And, uh, and something that came out of it, and, and Calvin had uh, brought up the uh, scenario about the uh, uh, sewer that's over on Maple Street. You know, we've had complaints about that. It backs up. we got to get scoon overs down there. And, and uh, when uh, Pat Pearl was the councilman, he'd bring that up there so often. <clears throat> and uh, Keith Miranda told us that infrastructure in that tip out there, anywhere covered by that tip, we can use those funds for infrastructure. Um, so it would be a good idea if you want to look at getting that sewer upgraded. Um, we could use funds to do that. I think there's something you need to pursue. Okay. Absolutely. The guys here to do it. The yeah. house is on Maple Street, right? Maple Street. And we've done some work in that area, haven't we? Intermediate. Well, we've been down there trying to uh, patch, patch it together, keep it going. Um, Calvin went down there, and there's how many uh, services? There's 22 services, about 1,200 linear feet of sewer. So there's 22 residents decided. It's a mess. It just. Just like it's this. 96 inch sewer. So you got 22 homes on a 6 inch sewer. It just doesn't work. So, I mean, if that's something that you want to pursue, then think about that, Jim. Yeah. And then the last thing, if you drive up and down Main Street, you see Main Street is the wider, brighter light. Um, the LED lights are in. Um, the total cost of the project started out at $12,512. We actually thought it was going to be about eighteen grand when I reported it to you. We received uh, 5235 back from IMEA uh, for energy efficiency, so it ended up costing the city $7,276 to upgrade the lights on Moon Street. Mm -hmm. Let's love that. Hey, so what about the bank? We talked to them about changing over to me. No, um, I, I was there. They asked Brian about the lights inside. Never said anything about the outside lights, but obviously they kind of look out of place right now. So Yeah. <clears throat> The other thing, too, you brought up about the pharmacy opening up. We also have a new restaurant in town that opened up uh, this past weekend, and maybe we have a look at having a little ceremony for them to <coughs> welcome them to the community. And which one is that? It's over there on, on 54 down there next to Scott's. Okay. It's called the Golden Gate Go Pancake House, I think. I've heard a lot of good reports about them. Yes. And who is it? I don't know. Her first name's Christy, that's all I know. Okay. <coughs> 
it'd be good to be a nice shot in the arm for her, since she's out there. Something in the paper would help. And, and, and um, gentlemen, um, the, uh, the other gentleman here from uh, Farnsworth, uh, Tim LaRock, is a pharmacy resident. Um, and just keep in mind that um, Farnsworth, and we do use them a lot, um, but I was surprised talking to Tim that there are actually three families that uh, Farnsworth Group employs that reside here in town. So uh, they're paying back into the community. They've got children that go to school here. They pay light bills and all that. So just so you know. Any questions to the city manager's report? A little map here. This is the proposed acreage. Yes. Uh, Kevin could best explain that to you. Sure. Sorry. Don't need an awful lot of time to... Um, essentially, we talked to Larry about, um, he was kind of wanting to get a concept idea of uh, what, the, what the potential maybe blocks of future development to the north of Prairie Ridge might look like. And we kind of generally talked about 15, 20, and 30 acre acres. Uh, so what we did is uh, Larry gave us a copy of the preliminary plan that uh, various Sarver associates had prepared back in, I think, 1999. Uh, before the first uh, edition of Prairie Ridge was uh, platted and actually built, they put together the whole plan. To, uh, it was it was a massive area, but they had platted it all. They had planned it all. I take it back because they never platted it, so we didn't have any property control data to go off of. So what we did is we just overlaid that image. We scanned it in and overlaid that image on basically a Google Earth map, just so you can kind of get a, a rough idea of what we're talking about. And then we kind of took those. A preliminary layout and lot lines and said okay this is kind of generally what 15 acres might look like within you know kind of using the, the bounds of the uh, preliminary lot lines and, and layout so we kind of did one that, that first area just to the north that takes a little piece over to the northwest where northeast is it what we're talking about now is what we're potentially going to develop this right. is the okay, where is the where is the one that's there now? Is what I want to see. Right here, right here. This is the right. sub the holder right here. So I can see the right there. That's where we're at now. We're going yeah. straight north of there. Right yeah. There. We're generally holding generally, I say, because it, it kind of bob the the west line kind of bobs and weaves a little bit based on the lot line, the preliminary lot line. But it would generally be holding the west line here, okay. and then the east line going up, and then where. Kind of flags and goes back to the east. We were going to take it over here, so you could get that that curve, that jog in George Rock, okay. and be able to have the stub back to the east and have this uh, set of lots and street to the west. Now these red lines going to the east. The first one is what street? Uh, I don't no know street. that I see so a street name on. No. There's no street. Oh, I'm sorry. Proposed. Which one are you talking about? He's talking the about the second right here. here. Yes. Right. There's no street, but that's, yeah. all, that's all farm ground right now. Okay. So it's this. What's the first street? This would be, I think, George Rock here. Oh, that would be, um, would this be water? Indiana, or I think no, the water is uh, further uh, yeah, I think yeah, the water should be right here. The right water's right 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 Okay, so we're all we'll, we'll, we'll So it's like here's one here. Here's Indiana. It would be water, Indiana, Franklin. Okay. And then here's 54. Here's Maple going up. All right. So if that kind of helps orient you a little, um, I feel like the third block of vehicles. Well, we were what we were saying. Well, we were kind of just generally throwing out there as a concept was to say if you took this piece, mm -hmm. that area would get you fifth, just a little over 15 acres, yeah, and, and that's approximate. That's about 15.1 acres. And I think uh, when I counted those up, that was how many lots? I sent you that email. Was that 20, uh, 27, 27 mm -hmm. I think. Oh, roughly, as according to the way they have it laid out now. now that Third could, acre lots? I'm not right. sure because uh, as those phases went through there, the lot sizes changed. Right. Yeah. That's there true. Was some, there was something yeah, about it. You know, and then if you wanted to go more, what we kind of just generally discussed with, with Larry was to say, okay, the roughly 20 would get you, if you wanted to do all of this plus this, where you take this cul-de-sac all the way to the east. Okay. Where is, uh, that would get you about a little over 20 miles. Like Western back. Avenue, where, where is that? Western Avenue would be right. <coughs> you have houses. So where that, where, 
as far as Maple Street, we are pretty far west of there. Correct. Okay. Correct. So 54 dropping down, that's what throws that off as far as yeah. existing streets. Yeah, exactly. You're going to have to go quite a ways north back. I think I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to read your mind, but I think you're looking for an intersecting street. And uh, and there's a lot of growth that has to happen before right. that will ever before you be my, my concern is, is that, uh, is, uh, I don't know how to put this, but uh, I didn't want to join Western, it, It's but it's going to be farther in west than that. You did or you did not? Did. Oh, it will not. Okay. It will it, not. At um, least as far as that preliminary plan layout, it was not. Okay. And, and um, in the second plat there, the <coughs> second edition, if we take the first one that Kevin just described to you and then that second one, you know, the, the folks out there wanted the sidewalk, that'll uh, make that property ours and then we can get that sidewalk mm -hmm. in there. So it's kind of dual fold from that standpoint too. Okay. So. Now, this was really just kind of looking at the streets and the lots. This did not incorporate, they had, uh, as far as that preliminary plan, they also had some detention and another detention basin right over here just to the east of these two red boxes. Or if you develop some of this, you may need to put some, some additional detention over there. Just where, on that map, where would Randy's property be? Okay. Randy's back up in here. Back up in there. Okay. Here, right there, probably close okay. to it. Can you send us no. this PDF? It will be down in here. Right yeah. Here. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we sent it to Larry just this afternoon in a PDF, and we can we can send. So you can forward it to us. Yeah. Please. As long as my computer will send it to you, it's, it's got a bug. <laughs> I'll do the best I can. Yeah. Can when you bring something like this, can can you bring more than one copy? Absolutely. Okay. Just Absolutely. Yeah, we yeah. just brought this one just for discussion, okay. and I can I can shoot you over some more. Yeah. If you want some more hard copies, we can get you as many as you want. Well, if you get the PDF, you should be able to look it on your computer. Sure. And sometimes you're right, that's easier. Well, I, I think Kevin, was, I'm thinking of having some up here for this. <laughs> sure. And this costs a lot for, for folks to look at those. Those yeah. cost a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. <laughs> <laughs> he got this, and he really, he's been working on this. He got this put together uh, knowing that he was coming tonight so we could discuss yeah, this real quick. Too. Yeah. That's why there's only one copy. Yeah. <clears throat> what direction do you need on that with us? Um, you just. Tell me how much of that you want to bite off. If you want to go that, I mean, we got to go north, which we've already decided. But I'd like to. I I think we ought to take that east track as well, mm -hmm. and then that way again we can put that walkway in there that's that's uh, been a battle for several years. And Obviously, we don't know the price of the land yet. Correct. Um, and I'm, I'm speaking for myself. It, so we're talking about that and that. Okay. And that. okay. I'm speaking for myself here. We had, at least over the last many years, um, there's really not been any control and there hasn't been any development there. Um, I think the more land we had, the better off we would be for the future growth of the community. I would like to pursue up to the, the full 30. Um, and then if that's something that's just something that's not doable, then we could back down from there. So that's my thoughts. Yeah. That, that I'd also like to see yeah. something, if we could, I mean, everything's a negotiation, but I'd like to see something mm -hmm. in the, the purchase agreement where there would be a possible another phase in there so that while we're talking currently and while we have an amenable landowner, we can get that involved rather than have to start over again in case something changes. <coughs> this would like an option. That'd be great. Yeah. So that, you know, when we were ready to mm -hmm. do that again, it's a lot easier. <clears throat> Anybody else? That, that might be good. Yeah, it looks good to me. I think, I think we need to make sure we don't repeat the pitfalls of the last subdivision. Mm -hmm. If we can get it. Well, we know what they are. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, there's quite a few. I mean, there was even the. Uh, there. There, I think one homeowner rightfully brought up that there was no home inspection done on his house. and. You know, there were major problems afterwards. I mean, uh, there's lots to discuss here in the upcoming few months. But I think as of now, unless there's any objection with council, we'd like to at least explore the, actually it'd be more than 30, wouldn't it be 15? 39. 39 acres. Was it 39? 
I so, think so. Yeah, you had all three of those blocks up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what the uh, survey crew was going to do? So you've got that overlay, so you can see that. But they're going to go out there and flag it as well, so you can go out there and and see the flags out in the field and get a, a good idea that way visually as well. So, so you'll know what's going on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you have two different ways of recognizing the area. Anybody else? Any non-agenda items and other business? Entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Call it. That's all right. Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Hahn? Yes. Harden? Yes. Kinley? Yes. Thank you, guys. Yes.